Every year, 17 million people take the big gamble. They go for a holiday by the sea, knowing perfectly well there's a 50-50 chance of a year's savings going down the drain. But even the most unpredictable climate in the world can't stop 17 million of us from answering the call. Come to Blackpool, dry and bracing. Come to Brighton on the sunniest coast of England. Come to South End, the best place under the sun. Come to Western Supermare for fun in the sun. Come to Scarborough, on the drier side of Britain, and so on. Sometimes the sun does shine. The big gamble pays off, and some of the 17 million people hit the jackpot. What is the jackpot? Why do people like to be beside the sea? Let's look at a fine warm day in a single seaside town. Somewhere not too big, not too small. Somewhere like this, on the coast of Kent, at the height of the holiday season. It's seven o'clock in the morning and a sunny day is just beginning. This place has been here for 150 years. As a matter of fact, Charles Dickens used to live here at Bleak House Broadstairs. The town hasn't changed much since his day when only the wealthy few could afford to go to the seaside. Now, in these days of holidays with pay, thousands come here. Broadstairs has grown up with the seaside holiday. Of course, there have been a few changes to suit modern tastes. Eight o'clock in the morning, a hundred gallons of ice cream is being mixed and frozen, all to be eaten in fruppnies and sixpennies before the day is out. But it isn't ice cream or candy floss or bubble gum or, or slot machines that bring people here. The two big attractions are just the same as they were when seaside holidays began, the sea and the sand. Yesterday's rubbish is being taken away and the sea and the sand are nearly ready for today's invasion of holiday makers. But for the first arrivals, the day ahead is no holiday. For the donkeys with their endless plodding up and down or for Smokey the clown who has to be funny seven days a week for 12 weeks. Nine o'clock in the morning and two very important people arrive. The man in charge of the sand and the man in charge of the sea. The sea is my responsibility. And that includes the safeguarding of human life. When this bay is covered at high water, then it's all mine. When the tide is out and the sands are dry, then Mr. Beat takes over. Yes, I'm in charge of the sands. In about an hour's time, there'll be over 10,000 people on those sands, and my door is open to all of them from nine in the morning until 10 at night. At the beginning of the day, I often wonder who I'll meet out of all those thousands. But where are all these thousands, and who shall we meet? They're all here somewhere, having breakfast in the 185 boarding houses, guest houses, or private hotels. Here, perhaps, one minute from sea and main bay, the guidebook says. Or here, hot and cold water in all bedrooms, separate tables, few seconds from sea. Or here, all rooms have interior spring mattresses, majority have bedside lamps adjacent to sea. Or here, excellent Yorkshire cooking, one minute from sea and bandstand. Or here, where we find Mr and Mrs Birchall from London. We're staying in a boarding house. It's costing us seven and a half guineas a week. Half of the children, there's the wife and the two children. It's the first holiday we've had for five years. The children have been too young before to bring away on holiday. I think this year they're just about the right age. I've taken on a part-time job two evenings a week. I'm a waitress. And of course, I make quite a bit of money to help towards these extras, these luxuries. We wait until the last few weeks and really have a purge. We sort of cut everything to the bone and save everything for the holiday. Not far away, spending their first seaside holiday, are Mr and Mrs Gowland from the north. The wife and I and the three children are staying here at a boarding house for a fortnight and uh, we're paying five guineas per week. 
Well, we had planned to go to Austria a few years ago, but we had the twins, so this time we came to the seaside. My job's domestic service. I've been in service for the past 25 years uh, as a cook, a butler, a valet. Coming out to the seaside and living in the boarding house is quite a relaxation for me to have other people to wait on me. As one that's done all this type of work, I find that it is a great relaxation to just sit back and have other people wait on me. And this, the guidebook says, is a first-class hotel overlooking the sea. Staying here is Mr. Brigden, who has escaped from the city. My wife and I, and her daughter Valerie, age 15, are staying here for a week's holiday. It's not our main holiday. We hope to go to Belgium this year. But it's what I call the extra week. A week that I look on as being one for rest rather than a hectic holiday making. Some people, of course, for one reason or another, take their holidays alone. They seem to go on going to the seaside all their lives. Perhaps it's less lonely there. Perhaps it's full of memories. Perhaps it's because of the, the timelessness of it all. The pattern never changes. 10 o'clock in the morning. Everybody in the town will be walking in one direction and one direction only, towards the sea. sea seems to pull them all down like a magnet. It's easy to see what the kids get out of it, especially when there's a clown thrown in for laughs. Yeah. I put my funny red nose on now. Oops. <laughs> oh, nearly went in my mouth, didn't it? <laughs> ah, you're the little boy that pushed me in the water last week, didn't you? Yeah, and you will get another duck in this week. <laughs> but the beach attracts young and old alike. The 10,000 people are all here. Somewhere among them are Mr and Mrs Birchall. We seem to make for the beach every morning, automatically, walk straight down to the beach, collect our deck chairs, sit down. The reason we pick the same spot mainly is we're rather near the litter bin, and they do love picking up little bits on the beach and running backwards and forwards to the litter bin. They think they're being so clever, tidying up the beach. Well, I must say I'm rather lazy. I just sit. Dennis digs the hole and bigger and bigger. As fast as he's digging it, Tony's filling it in, wondering why it isn't getting any bigger. Well, I think I just like to see them playing on the beach and just enjoying themselves normally. I think they look so cute running around in bathing suits. And I get a kick out of it somehow, just sitting there watching them. Simple way to spend a morning, isn't it? Yet thousands do exactly the same thing. Mr and Mrs Gowland, for instance. Well, every morning we wander down to the beach and sit there and the children play and have a paddle. My husband makes some sand castles. And... As a matter of fact, I think it's the most easiest way of relaxing in the world. I think it's marvellous to watch the children totally enjoying themselves, running down to the waterfront, running back again, knocking the sand castles down that Daddy's worked hard to build. Really wonderful. If one really wants to relax, sit on the seafront and just listen to the sea rolling. And what are they all thinking about? All I ever do, is, it seems to be doing, is just keeping the children amused, running into the water. I'm, my main thoughts are really all the time of ch children, just to see that they're keeping happy and they're enjoying themselves. And I don't really, <laughs> don't really think about anything else myself. This is probably the last holiday I shall have for a few years as I'm leaving my present job, domestic service, and branching out on my own. I've bought a fish and chip shop business in the north. Of course, it's going to be jolly hard work in the beginning. It's no easy matter starting from scratch, and that's what I'm starting from, but I think I'll come through in the end. I'm afraid I'm rather nosy type. I like to look at people and wonder what they do for a living, if they're on holiday, where they come from, if they're enjoying themselves, and what type of people they really are when they're out of swimsuits. The Brigdens arrive a little later. The reason why we go to the seaside rather than perhaps the country is mainly due, I suppose, to an ingrained habit which grows with one 
from childhood. When we were children, we always went to the sea, and it becomes, as I say, a habit which continues as one grows older. I suppose it is comforting to go back year after year and find that nothing's changed. Even the clown puts on the same old Punch and Judy show, seven days a week for 12 weeks of the year. Everybody says, good morning, Uncle Smokey. And they say to their mums and dads, that's Uncle Smokey over there, Daddy. That's Uncle Smokey over there, Mummy. That really makes the day when everybody's friendly. Eleven o'clock in the morning. The holiday is in full swing. But as I said before, for some, it's no holiday. What about the landladies? I've been running this boarding house now for 13 years. We've got 14 bedrooms here. We usually cater for 33 people, including children. We charge five guineas a week in August. Of course, half price for the kiddies. I do all the cooking myself, and all the washing and the ironing, but the two girls help me with the vegetables and the bedrooms. We never get a lot of time for sitting down through the day. And as for the food, I get sick of the sight of the food. All I have ever had is just a boiled egg now and again. It's usually the working class people that are the most grateful for what you do for them. You get the upper class people come down, they just think you're doing it because you're paid to do it. But with the working class people, they're really grateful for what you do and they appreciate everything. I have been here in Broadstairs now 11 years and I have run this guest house for that many years. I take around 16 to 17 people. I have seven letting bedrooms. Our charge is seven guineas a week and we take children. We uh, babysit for them and uh, generally help the mother. And we do do our best to get them out on evening so that their time is free and they can get with Abby. My home, I feel, is uh, home from home. I keep it that way because uh, so many people like to feel the atmosphere of home, and if they come away from good homes, they do like to go into a good home. I'm the manager of the leading hotel in the town. We have 31 bedrooms, and we can accommodate approximately 50 guests. During August, our present uh, terms are 12 guineas a week, inclusive. They will, like everybody else, I suppose, go up again next year. My morning really starts by checking uh, that the staff are on duty. I employ, at the present time, 21 employees, I then have to check the guests leaving, the guests arriving, see that the dining room are informed of those leaving and those arriving so that tables may be allotted, and then check the bar stocks, make a list out of the quantities of goods to be brought up from the sellers. This year, the relief managers will be taking over in October to enable us to take our holidays. My wife and I will be going over to Spain, spending a fortnight in Spain. 12 o'clock midday, and it's certainly no holiday for the man in charge of the sand. His office door is still open to all and sundry. Come in. How would you like this for your breakfast? Not very much. How long have you been putting up with this? Two weeks. Have you spoken to your landlady about it? I didn't come down here to have rows, and anyway, I've got a train to catch. I get a lot of little complaints of all sorts during the course of the season, not necessarily concerning the sands, but about accommodation, food, etc. I always ask people whether they have complained to their landlady and invariably they say no. For example, there's the chap who can't stomach eggs for breakfast. Instead of asking his landlady quietly whether he might have toast instead, he puts up with the eggs throughout his holiday, then comes and sees me on the very last day. It's my policy to listen to all complaints. It's not always possible to do anything about them, but people seem pleased if they can come to someone like me and get it off their chest. <laughs> 